Hello students, in this video we are going to talk about how to draw the structures of oxo acids. This is the part 2 of the series Tips and Tricks from P Block Elements. In part 1 we spoke about how to name oxo acids. In case you have not seen the video, you can find the link in the description box below. Let's get started with how to draw the structure of oxo acids. For this to be understood, first of all, we need to recall what is meant by the term oxo acid. So basically oxo acid is an acid as the name suggests which contains at least one hydrogen atom, one non-metal and at least one oxygen atom in its formula. And examples of oxo acids include HNO3 nitric acid, H2CO3 carbonic acid, H3BO3 boric acid and the list goes on. So these oxo acids are very important topic when it comes to entrance examinations such as mains, neat and advanced. So you would have to know how to draw the structures of oxo acids. In fact, you can draw the structures using chemical bonding concepts, but then that method could be a little longer and consume a lot of your time. So instead, in this video, we're going to discuss a few shortcuts with the help of which we can draw the structures easily without any hassle. So to learn that shortcut, first of all, we need to identify that these oxo acids that we are talking about can be of two types. These can be the oxo acids which contain only one central atom or one non-metal and this can be an oxo acid which is consisting of two non-metals or two central atoms. It also can be more than two but we'll talk about one non-metal and two non-metals because in our syllabus we get to see only these two types. Examples of the oxo acids which contain one non-metal. Nitric acid contains one non-metal whereas here, here is nitrogen, only one nitrogen is present in the structure. And uh, in H2CO3 also you have only one non-metal, carbon. In sulfuric acid, H2SO4, you again have one non-metal. So these are all the examples of those oxo acids which contain only one non-metal in their formula. On the other hand, examples of the non-metals which include two non-metallic atoms in their structure will be H4P2O6. One more example, you can take it as H4P2O7 and you can also consider H2S2O4. So these are the molecules in which you get to see two non-metals in the molecular formula. So the shortcuts to draw the structures would be different from both of these types. In this video, right now we'll talk about this category. Uske baad mein hum dusri category ki baat karenge, theke? So let's move to the next page wherein we are going to discuss how to draw the structures of oxo acids which contain only one non-metal in their molecular formula. So to learn this we need to be knowing two rules or we need to be following two rules. Rule number one, first of all you have to observe the central atom which is that non-metal or which is that central atom. The central atom usually can be an element from period number two or maybe an element from period number three. If it is an element from period number 2, usually it can be boron or it can be carbon or it also can be nitrogen. If it is an element from period number 3, it can be phosphorus or sulfur or chlorine. You can also observe the oxo acids being formed by the elements of other periods from period number 4. Uh, from period number 4, you can observe bromine forming oxo acids. From period number 5, you can observe iodine forming oxo acids. But as I told you earlier, let's stick to the syllabus and let us focus on what we get to see frequently in our syllabus. So coming back, why should we look at the central atom and what information do we get from here? So if the central atom is coming from period number 2, it would be having only two shells in its atomic structure. And if it is coming from period number 3, it will be having three shells in its atomic structure. If it is two shells, you will be having shell number 1, shell number 2. Shell number 1 will have only 1s subshell, shell number 2 will have 2s and 2p. So the period 2 elements like boron, carbon and nitrogen maximum have got 3 subshells which is 1s, 2s and 2p. And they cannot stretch their electronic configuration or valency beyond 2p. But when you talk about the period 3 elements like phosphorus, sulphur and chlorine, they have 3 shells, shell number 1, 2, 3. From first shell you have 1s, from second shell there is 2s and 2p, from third shell you have 3s, 3p and also 3d. 
So ultimately the point is over here there is high scope for stretching or exciting the electronic configuration. You get to see first excited state and second excited state in elements such as phosphorus and sulfur because you are having you are having the third shell also available over here and that's why these three elements in their oxo acids will exhibit variable valency also so we are looking at the central atom just to identify the hybridization possibilities if it is element from period number two only hybridization possible is sp2 and maximum it can be sp3 but if you are talking about period number three elements it also could go to d orbital involving in hybridization and rule number two that we need to look at is the number of hydrogen atoms that you have in that particular formula. Say for example, I'm talking about HNO3. How many hydrogens do you have? It's one. So the number of hydrogen atoms is always equal to the number of hydroxy groups present in the structure. In HNO3, I have one hydrogen, which means in HNO3, I have one hydroxy group. So if there are four hydrogen atoms, four hydroxy groups will be present. So this is rule number two. But then these two rules and the shortcuts that we are talking about are not applied to all the molecules. There are some exceptions. Make a note of the exceptions as well. Exception number one, H3PO2. Exception number two, H3PO3. Exception number three, H4P2O5. Followed by H2SO5, H3PO5 and last and final HNO4. These six molecules that you see here cannot be drawn with the help of the shortcuts that we are learning. You would have to separately learn the structures of these six molecules. Please keep that point in mind. So let's come back. We are learning how to draw the structures of the oxo acids which contain one non-metal in their formula. For that, you need to be observing two rules. Rule number one, observe the central atom if it is coming from second period or third period. Thereby, you can understand what kind of bonds will it be forming. You will understand this rule better when we take examples in the next page. And rule number two is observe the number of hydrogen atoms. The number of hydrogen atoms in the given molecule is equal to number of hydroxide groups. And the third point that I told you is the exceptions. These six structures are exceptions and you can't apply these shortcuts that we are learning to these six structures. Let's move to the next page now so that we take examples and we understand these concepts better. Let's get started with the, the first molecule H3BO3, boric acid, H3BO3. So observe this molecule. Is this the oxo acid containing one central atom? Answer is yes. There's only one boron, so only one non-metal or one central atom. So we can apply the rules that we have seen in this page to derive the structure. But before that, check if that is falling into exception list. But no, it's not falling into exception list. So we can use the rules. So rule number one, observe the central atom. It is boron. Boron comes from period number two and it has got totally five electrons. Configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Correct? So now in boron, there are three electrons in the valency shell. So the maximum number of bonds that you can expect for boron is equal to three. Right? And the hybridization that you can expect in boron comes out to be what? Comes out to be sp2. And now go to rule number two. Observe the number of hydrogen atoms. There are three hydrogen atoms in boron. So this is rule number one. The rule number two, two hydrogen, three hydrogen atoms in boron, which is uh, equal to three hydroxy groups. So now to draw the structure of boron, take boron at the center. And because I told you that three hydrogen atoms are connected as three hydroxy group, write all of them, hydroxy group number one, hydroxy group number two and hydroxy group number three. Since I told you that it is sp2 hybridization, you can draw the structure in trigonal, uh, sorry, planar trigonal shape. Take it. So this is how boron trihydroxide or boric acid looks like. I hope now you are able to grasp these shortcuts better. Let's take one more example to get this better. So the second example, let us consider H2CO3. Rule number one. Rule number one is observe the central atom which is carbon, atomic number six, configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So now in this there are four electrons in the last shell, so maximum number of bonds that can be formed is equal to four. And if four bonds are being formed, we consider the hybridization to be sp3 hybridization or the four bonds that are formed can also be sigma bonds and pi bonds. Let us observe the rule number two. How many hydrogens do I see here? I see two hydrogens, which is equal to two hydroxy groups. So if two hydrogens is equal to two hydroxy groups, how can we draw the structure? Carbon in the center and you have two hydroxy groups, hydroxy group number one, hydroxy group number two. 
Now, other than whatever you have represented, what else are you left with? Out of H2CO3, you already have consumed both the hydrogens. You have represented carbon. And what are you left with now? You are left with three oxygens. Out of these three oxygens, two oxygens are already in hydroxy group. Mein already use kar liye. So, two oxygens are over. Now, you are having only one oxygen atom left. So, one oxygen atom is connected to this carbon directly. But then the point is oxygen's valency is 2 and carbon's valency is 4 according to the configuration that you have seen. Which means you have to be taking a double bond to satisfy both of their valency. And this is how H2CO3 looks like. I hope you are getting it clear. In case of any doubts or any questions, you can also put down your doubts in the comment section below so that uh, I answer your doubts. Let's move on to one more example. In fact, in this page, let us take two examples and you try drawing it on yourselves. Let's take H3PO4 on this side and on the other side, let us take H2SO3. So you try drawing it with the help of uh, the rules that we have learned. Observe the central atom and its configuration is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P3. How many electrons in the last shell? There are totally 5 electrons in the last shell. So maximum phosphorus can involve in 5 bonds. Keep that point in mind. So now move on to the second rule. The second rule is observe the number of hydrogens. It is 3. And how many hydroxide groups? It is 3 hydroxide groups. Keeping these two points in mind, take phosphorus as a central atom and you try drawing the structure of H3PO4. And on the other hand, in H2SO3, sulfur acting as a central atom, atomic number 16, configuration 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3s2 3p4 and totally six electrons in the last shell maximum number of bonds that you can use in sulfur is six and the second rule there are two hydrogen atoms and hence there must be two hydroxy groups take sulfur as a central atom use the rules and use the data that you have derived and draw the structure i hope you have tried drawing for phosphorus i mean phosphoric acid and uh, sulfurous acid as well let me help you how to draw it and cross verify if your answer is correct or not so phosphorus has got three hydroxy groups. So for three hydroxy groups, I am writing over here, there are three hydroxy groups for phosphorus. And after three hydroxy groups, and after representing phosphorus also, what am I left with? I used three hydrogens, I used three oxygens, and I used one phosphorus. H3PO4 may say three hydrogens represent kiye gaye, ek phosphorus represent kiya gaya, teen oxygens represent kiye gaye. And I have one more oxygen left to be represented. And how can I write it? I am writing it with the help of a single bond. But then the point is maximum valency of phosphorus is 5 and maximum valency of oxygen is 2. Both the valencies are not satisfied and to have it satisfied, I will take a double bond. Observing the central atom and the period number electronic configuration of the central atom will help you understand how many bonds should you place in the molecule, right? And now coming back to this H2SO3, there are two hydrogens, hence two hydroxy groups. Two hydroxy groups I am writing over here, hydroxy group number 1, hydroxy group number 2. And other than the whatever atoms are represented here, what else am I left with? Two oxygens represented, two hydrogens represented, one sulfur represented. So two hydrogens gone, one sulfur gone and two oxygens gone. So I have one more oxygen to show. And that one more oxygen I can write it with the help of a single bond. But then the point is sulfur's maximum valency is 6. And oxygen's maximum valency is 2. So if I take a double bond, now oxygen will have a will have its own valency satisfied. Then what about sulfur? Sulfur will have a lone pair of electrons. And in H2SO3, the sulfur's valency is only 4. And remaining 2 electrons, what happened to remaining 2 electrons? They are available in form of lone pair. So this is lone pair of electrons. Altogether, valency is equal to 6. So there are some atoms where you will be having lone pair of electrons represented. Especially in the atoms of period number 3, you get to see these lone pair of electrons, right? I hope this point is clear to everybody and I hope you all could draw the structures correctly. Let's move on to the next page wherein I'm going to give you two more structures and you are going to try it out. The molecule that you would have to try is HClO4. Uske saath saath, the next molecule I want you to try is H2SO4. So use the rules and draw the structure of HCl4, HClO4 and H2SO4. So rule number one, the central atom, chlorine. And chlorine atomic number 17 and its configuration is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P5. Totally seven electrons in the valency shell. Maximum seven, uh, seven bonds can be observed. 
the maximum number bond number of bonds is seven but it's not necessary all the seven bonds should be formed according to the requirement you have to place the bonds okay and uh, in h2so4 sulfur atomic number 16 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p4 is acting as the central atom there are totally six electrons in the last shell now apply rule number two in both the cases rule number two is one hydrogen atom here so one hydroxy group two hydrogen atoms here so two hydroxy groups and now draw the structure chlorine being the sulfur atom sorry chlorine being the central atom over here chlorine is the central atom and over here sulfur is the central atom and now what all do you have represent the hydroxy groups that you have in case of chlorine hclo4 i have only one hydroxy group and in case of sulfur, how many hydroxy groups do I have? H2SO4 ke paas kitne hydroxy groups hai? H2SO4 ke paas pure do hydroxy groups hai. Hydroxy group number one, group number two, right? And now other than whatever you have represented, what is lacking? According to the formula, you should have three more oxygens represented. So where do you write them? You can write them in form of double bonds. But why in form of double bonds? Why not single bonds? If you write in single bonds, oxygen's valency will not be satisfied. Fine. You wrote in double bonds. Now check the valency of chlorine. How many bonds is it having here? Seven. According to its period or according to its position in the periodic table, can it effort seven valency? Yes, it can. So your structure is correct. And when it comes to H2SO4, what else should you be representing? You should be representing two more oxygen atoms. And where will you write it? Oxygen atom one, oxygen atom two. And why did you use double bonds to satisfy the valency of oxygen? After using double bonds, is sulfur's valency matching up? Yes, sulfur can undergo maximum 6 valency. Sulfur can reach up to maximum of 6 valency and here you go, 6 valence electrons. I hope you could understand how to draw the structures of these oxo acids and I also have got a quick homework for all of you. You yourselves try drawing the structures of these molecules for better understanding. HNO2, HNO3, H4SiO4. And uske baad mein HClO3, HClO2 and also HClO. These are the oxo acids that you frequently see in your exams. So do it as your homework and while you do this, in case you have any doubts or any questions, you can ask me in the comment sections below. I hope you have understood whatever I have taught you in this video. I'll see you in one other video. Until then, bye.